there. I'm the Robert Knoll. This is the E Open Blues Journey, part 10. This is our journey home. Final episode in this journey of open E. What I've been wanting to teach you and get you to be creative about is just looking at a one chord like open E, which could be E minor or any E7, E9, E minor 9, E minor 7 chord scale and arpeggio. What belongs to E? Well, E major scales, E blue scales, E dominant scales, E minor scales, E minor blues scales, the pentatonic scales. We went through the whole tone scales, whole half diminished scales, and the half whole diminished scales. And I think that's enough to bring us back home for this journey that we've been on. Open E, as you remember, is dealing with the open E position the shape of E chords in open position where we're utilizing open strings as much as possible, but we know we can close them in some cases, some of the intervals. Knowing your intervals, knowing your trinity, not the trinity in religion, the trinity in guitar is chord scale arpeggio based upon a shape and a position on the guitar. And this is like the E shape that would conform to, if I was to move this up one fret, then I would be like in an F bar chord, so on. We look at it maybe as a caged E. You look that way, but I also teach my students that this is form two, but form two open, and it transitions to form three. So that we can bring this home now, I want to talk about, once again, chromaticism. I've done a lot of videos on chromaticism and the chromatic 12-tone scale, which I hope you'll look at those videos because they will help you with understanding what we've been doing in this journey. Utilizing E to E, that's 12 tones. If I go E to E, that's 12 tones. Right? And if I continue on, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve tones, okay? And I could keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then I'm back to E again. Twelve tone, the twelve tone system. If we brought all of those scales, everything we've been doing in the riffs I've been kind of showing you, some of the ideas of arpeggios and chords and scales in the open E position. And we just say, okay, well, every note, all 12 tones have a value to the style of the blues. I'm focusing more in the style of blues, but you could put this to rock and roll or any other kind of style in a 12 tone scale. In the blues, we like to get into the feeling and the, I've talked about the consonants dissonance, the leading tones, the making consonants dissonance to tension and release. When I hit in a root note, well, that's just a great note in the blues all the time. But minor second isn't used so much. That's our next step in the 12 tone scale. Or we could find it in the diminished half whole tone version. But that F, if I bend, that minor second has a place in the blues. If I go to the major second, which is F sharp, well, you know, we that belongs to the major scale, it belongs to a few other scales we could go into. I'm not gonna go into all the scales that that major second belongs to, or nine, F sharp, but that F sharp, it belongs in the blues as well. I can blues out on it. And resolve it to E. to another interval. Second's a great blues tone. We had minor second, major second. We're at minor third now. Well, minor third is sanctioned as the blue tone, okay? Minor third, sad, part of the minor triad. It gives us the minor scale, minor arpeggio, and so on. The minor third, it happens to be the G note. What can you do with the open string? Well, you could do weird things or think possibilities, but if we close it, we know we can bend it, we can vibrato. There's all kinds of, all kinds of nuances.
And whether I was in E or E major, major, there's still a place for that minor third, that blue tone, okay? When I go to major third, that's generally a happy tone. But as you heard, I can make that lead to the minor third or to the fourth. Or if I'm bending that note, major third, I'm bending that major third to the fourth. And it becomes a bluesy tone. Perfect fourth, of course. That's your A. We're going chromatically, right? That would be one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth degree of the uh, 12 tone scale, okay? We're looking at chromaticism, but that perfect fourth. The big bending note could do so much with the nuances and bends with that four. Pull-offs. Hammers. Trill. double bends, whole step bends, all kinds of vibratos, slow, but increment bends. Now we're at the tritone. Right, ah. It's that leading tone, right? It, it wants to go somewhere to a wholesome fourth, a psychedelic fourth, or up to the perfect fifth, up to some nature, some naturalism. But it leads, it leads down a half step, it leads up a half step. The leading tone causes dissonance. And we need to resolve it or it just hangs there in the limbo. Wow, weirdness. Perfect fifth, nature, home. position, but I could close it so I can bend it, the fifth, I'm bending towards the minor six, or a whole step to the major six. Lots of possibilities with that fifth. It's part of the major triad, the minor triad. Perfect fifth. Minor six. Wow. I like minor six because it's, it's a little strange. Put in the blues, but in the chromaticism. Right there it is. to a 
an E chord or to an E minor chord. Add C. Add it to your bass line. I can, I can pull it towards the major six. I can soak in on the feeling. traditional blues riffs because it leads to that fifth passing tone to the fifth or the chromaticism from the major six the C sharp now one step up for minor six major six Fifth, minor six, six. See the chromaticism. So I'm talking about chromatics here. The 12 tone chromatic scale. We can use everything in the blues because I'm not stuck in one scale. I'm not sounding like just one blues guitar player. I want to do my thing, but I want to know I can blues out on any interval. Do something with it that brings it into my feelings and emotions. So that major, I love, to me, you know, I hang in on that. It's it's really kind of a shameful note. I'm really hurting when I'm on that major six. But where do you find it in a blues scale? What? Do you find it in a major blues scale? Huh? I put it in my blues scale which is that chromatic 12 tone scale every tone is a blues tone if you know what to do with it and that's going to lead to the dominant seven or minor seven which is in the minor blues scale which is your d open d d or to major seven so we got chromaticism But that D seven we're finally to that 12 tone the major seven yay <laughs> we're at the major seven 12 tones i bring that into the blues i'm playing the blues and i can use it as a le leading tone or passing tone or what do you want to call it using it chromatically to get to e to the root to a resolution or resolve it into the seven, the minor seven, major seven, bend it into the root, or bring it down, trill it down, hammer it down, use it part of the chromaticism to build tension and then release. There's that minor second again. Remember? This gives you some ideas. I could go on and on showing you riffs, doing arpeggios, adding those intervals, the 12 tones into the E chord or the E minor chord, going a little crazy 
find a way to use all 12 tones. So I've got one scale, but I know that all my other scales, the major, the minor, the major blues, minor blues, the pentatonics, the whole tone scales, the diminished scales, they're all within that 12 tones. But I know that I could pick any one of those 12 tones in this open E position or in any kind of position. We're just in open E on this journey. Go to E to E. And E to E, the octaves, in between there, we've got 12 tones. Every one of those 12 tones has purpose and ways to use it chromatically. A lot of times in blues, we use the leading tone, the chromatics. slowed all that down I get even bluesier if I put it into a mood that's a slow mood and, and started moving from E to other chords then I can move that 12 tone system to any chord the one two three four five six or seven chord or the in between chords the two five ones the one four five progressions the five chord so much to do but I hope this journey gets you to think about things. It depends on where you're at with your guitar. If you're a beginner, this might be a whole too much to think about, but at least to get you knowing that where possibilities are. If you're intermediate, you're going, okay, I can, I can learn these scales and start to learn some of those riffs and see where they're coming from, what intervals are in these riffs. You know, you want to learn to stop your video here and keep looking at that riff over and over again. Okay. And when you get the intervals, then you've done some analyzing. You get better at listening what I'm showing you. I'm, I'm teaching you in another kind of like I call a groovel or groovy way is the visual to be able to see the fingers and repeat it. And I'm talking intervals to you. You've got to know your 12 tone intervals. And if you know of major and minor and then your major blues, your minor blues, you know what pentatonics. And if you get out there where you finally get into that whole tone augmented scales and the diminished scales, then you see all of that within the chromatic scales. And they're movable. They can encompass the whole fretboard of chromaticism. So really, if you were playing a blues, whatever, if you were doing a shuffle or a chord progression, randomly put my finger anywhere just land anywhere and make it in or put it into the blues emotion I want in my melody or into my soloing my improvising improvising right just coming off my head man what I'm hearing right now as I'm doing this video I've got an A7 but maybe I'll stick with E thinking an E, but I could think an A. That brings in a whole other world, playing on every chord with the 12 tones. But if I just randomly, you know, put my finger anywhere. Oh, what's this? That would be the perfect fifth. E, you got a five. So I can, you're playing your blues. tritone. Ooh, C sharp major six. So anywhere I could put a finger, let me land a finger anywhere, and I'll bring it to the blues. I'll blues it. I'll make it happen in my blues world. If I was playing rock and roll, I'd do the same thing. 
guitar philosophy, sometimes though in other like folk music, bluegrass or country music, you want to stick to some basic things. You don't want to get too far out, but it's always possible to use every 12 tone. And that's where you get creativity from. That's where you can develop more. And that's what I'm about. That's what this whole journey was about. I hope you enjoyed this journey. I hope you'll hit the like, the subscribe, and maybe get over to my Guitar Zone on Patreon and become part of my Guitar Zone family. I'd love to have you there. Join in on a tier, have some lessons with me remotely, wherever you live in the world. That would be great. But if not, use these videos. Come back to them and search around in my other videos. You can do a search of different topics that you have, and I probably have a video on it. And there's some really great videos coming up. It's just I've got something tremendous happening, that, uh, and you need to be subscribed, okay? Always can put a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. Guitar is my life. It always has been. What are the possibilities? I'm into this critical thinking where I want to be able to do more with it, express more of my feeling, more empathy, more compassion, more caring into what I play. So when I play something, it's making me want to play for you right now, okay? Because my emotions change. They change every day. We all do. Things happen in our lives. But to be able to express that and how you improvise, and if it's in the blues world, how do you make it work? How do you make it happen? So this gets into the deeper theory of, of my guitar science, my guitar philosophy. And I'm trying to share it with you, and it's evolving, and I'm going to have more journeys for you. We're going to go on more journeys, more adventures. Some of these open E things I'm going to do in other keys, but they might not be open A. It might be closed A or form 2A or D or C or E flat. I might do other keys just to get you into different zones and seeing how, hey, it all comes together. The landscape, the geography. It's really fascinating. I love uh, the discoveries that I'm making. And this is what I'm trying to teach you, how to make discoveries, how to go on journeys and adventures. And go on them with me and with other people and on your own throughout the artificial intelligence and everything that's on YouTube and everywhere. But I'm trying to show you how I go on journeys and I'm trying to share my journeys and adventures with you to make discoveries. All right, Robert Knoll saying thanks and uh, see you on the next adventure, the next mission that we have, the next journey once again. Take your time, let it soak in, and think about it. Sometimes just thinking about it, hearing it, taking your time. There's no hurry. But wanting to understand it and to learn and to be creative, this is something you can do.